So we're going mushroom hunting today in Summit County, Colorado. Jenny is taking some video and we are looking both for some edible species just for fun and just looking to see what's out there. Um, the first thing to remember when looking for mushrooms is to respect nature. They're a vital part of the ecosystem. A lot of fungi grow in conjunction with trees like this one here that's growing right underneath a, an evergreen tree and they live in a symbiotic relationship with the trees. The underground, what would be a root structure called mycelium in mushrooms, intertwines with the tree roots and there's a quite complicated exchange of nutrients that goes on and the, the mushrooms actually help protect the roots of the trees from other pathogens, from poisons. They can block toxic heavy metals. Um, if you are collecting edible species, you want to have a collecting ethic, which means not taking more than you need, not taking more than you can eat, leaving some for the animals, and being aware that, like with harvesting anything else, you can have an impact by taking, by taking too much. You also need to have a pretty good basic knowledge of identifying mushrooms, something that's acquired best through experience, through going out with classes or other experienced people. And the first part of that is kind of understanding where mushrooms grow, what their habitats are, and uh, the second part is, is being able to identify different, different parts of the mushrooms, the stem, the cap, the gills, the spore bearing mass underneath the cap. And that all helps. And the best thing to do is to identify them in place. Sometimes you don't even need to cut them or turn them over. You can just look at a mushroom and, uh, and pretty much know what it is. And of course, after years of doing it, you start to just recognize them as old friends. And it's uh, early August now, the first week of August in Summit County. We've had a couple of weeks of good monsoon rains. And it looks like it's going to be a good season. You need a knife to go mushroom hunting? A small pen knife will do. A lot of the mushroom books tell you to take a basket, a straw basket, but if you're going to be hiking a long ways, that's not really that practical. And the reason for that is because they're fairly fragile, and so if you have a sort of a broad basket, you can lay them all next to each other instead of stacking them one on top of the other. Um, but I use a, either a canvas bag, um, and then I usually have a couple of paper bags with me as well, so I can put different kinds in different bags. Um, if I'm collecting some that I don't know exactly what they are, I'll put them in a separate bag. Um, if I'm taking them somewhere to an expert to get identified, I'll do that as well. No idea what kind it is. There's so many species of, um, I don't want to say nondescript because that's a little bit pejorative, but uh, medium-sized brown mushrooms that uh, I don't know what they are. There are some mushroom experts out there who could tell you without a second thought exactly what species that is, but for those of us interested in especially collecting for edible mushrooms, we tend to sometimes bypass those. Although I do try and take a lot of pictures of these and then go back later, especially once the mushroom season is over, and, and uh, I'll take pictures of both the top and the bottom to see the gills and then compare them in books and try and learn at least a few, two or three new species each year. And right here we have growing a an agaricus species. And this mushroom is actually very closely related to the button mushroom that you'll find in the grocery store. It's the same genus, just a different species. The button mushroom in the store in the store is the Agaricus bisporus, and this is an Agaricus of an unknown unknown species to me as yet. Cortinarius is the Latin genus and refers to veiled or uh, comes from the same Latin root word as curtain because when they grow, hmm. they have a, uh, a sort of a veil that connects the cap to the stem until they get mature and it breaks. And sometimes you can see the remnant of that kind of looks like a shredded, shredded lace curtain or something like that. It's a tricholoma. tricholoma. Trick for short. Okay, since we cut it, we'll take it home and I'll try and make a 100% idea on this one. I love the color of this, the kind of the olive color. Yeah. So Jenny just found a pair of fungi in the Swillis family. These are actually called slippery jack by their common name for a pretty obvious reason if you look at the, the viscous cap on them. And uh, they have a nice firm flesh and these are very desired edibles. 
And uh, I just learned this yesterday interviewing a Montana State University researcher. These, uh, this genus of mushrooms is critical to the reproduction of some types of evergreens, especially the five needle pines, which there aren't any right around here, so uh, not to worry. Uh, but they're being used, the spores of these are being used to grow, especially white bark pine in nurseries, to strengthen them for when they're transplanted out into the, um, into the wild. And they belong to a larger, larger order of mushrooms, uh, the boletes, which do not have gills, but they have a spongy spore mass underneath the cap. And we're going to pick one of these and turn it over so you can see that. And it's, uh, it should be yellow. It should have a white, a white stem. I'm 99% nine, 99.9% .9 sure of what I'm looking at here. These can grow and sometimes in great, great numbers underneath different types of conifers here in Colorado and actually all over the world. Um, I've been out looking for mushrooms with friends from Austria and from Slovakia and uh, they all recognize these as a species that grow in their in their country as well. And you can harvest a couple if you find a clump of four. Take two and leave two. Take the two youngest and freshest. Um, leave the older ones to drop spores and reproduce. This is one of the few kinds of mushrooms you can actually peel. Oh. And you do need to peel this. It's not deadly poisonous or anything, but it's kind of indigestible. Huh. So for this particular type of edible, you take that, you take that skin off, and then look at that. It's just a beautiful, uh, mm. yeah, a beautiful uh, flesh, beautiful mushroom flesh. So this is a related to the last mushroom that we found. It's also in the Swillus genus, but it doesn't have the slippery cap. But it does have uh, underneath not gills but a spongy spore mass and again very important uh, mycorrhizal mushroom for evergreens imagine the the roots and technically they're not really roots so we'll call them mycelium which it is the underground energy absorbing part of the mushroom spreading underground and intertwining with the roots of this small tree here and uh, helping to helping the tree to take up nitrogen and phosphorus and in return getting some carbohydrates that sort of leach out of the roots of the tree and uh, most trees that we have in the forest wouldn't grow wouldn't grow nearly as well without this symbiotic relationship with these with these mushrooms here so um, we'll take a we'll take a half of this just so we can take a look underneath. Pretty sure this is a blue staining swillus. That's obviously not the Latin name, but we'll we'll cut it and then we'll take a look and see if it stains blue. And we'll take a look at the spongy tube underneath, and there it goes, starting to stain blue already. Don't know if you'll be able to see that on the video. Oh yeah, I think, I think so. I got it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right in there. Look at the stem. Look how blue it's getting. So yeah, over here we've got some Mycena growing, and again, I'm not a super expert, so I don't know the species, but it's definitely in the genus Mycena. These tiny little brown ones are really beautiful, beautiful, rich color, and they're scattered all through this pine litter, and are one of the most important decomposers of organic matter. They break down this old pine uh, debris into constituents that can go back into the soil, locks up carbon, puts nutrients back, creates earth. As uh, Marilyn Shaw, who's an expert with the Colorado Mycological Society, once put it to me, without these, all these different types of mushrooms, we'd be literally up to our eyeballs in dead branches. The Cossabee? Mm -hmm. Ah. Hmm. And this is a what? A lactarius, lactarius. genus Lactarius, which is another large species complex, some of which are edible. Uh, growing around here, Lactarius deliciosus. Delicious deliciosus? Milky. Yep, ah. that's the official <laughs> uh -huh. species, Latin species name. Yeah, there's some argument among mycologists. There may be subspecies or different, different varieties within the species. Uh, not all mushrooms have been uh, described exactly in terms of their genetics to, to really establish um, firm species identification. A lot of them have, but a lot of them have not. And in fact, there's probably still many 
undiscovered species out there. One, one cool thing about them, makes them mysterious, is they're very ephemeral. They only sprout up above the ground, even though the mycelium persists underground for weeks and months in the summer. They only sprout under exactly the right combination of moisture and temperature. Uh, so there may be mushrooms out there sprouting that nobody's ever seen because nobody's been in the right place at the right time to see them. That's not the case with these. These are common and uh, they grow in different types of habitat. I'm, I'm surprised to see it right here. I often see them more in sort of grassy areas and not so much directly in forest. Since there's a bunch more growing, I'm going to go ahead and take this one and knock it over so we can see the bottom. That's a russula? A russula. Ah, is that edible? Uh, again, it's a large complex, a genus of, uh -huh. of a mushroom with uh -huh. or a fungi with a lot of different species. A few species are edible, many are not. Uh -huh. There's one that's actually called the sickener by its common name, uh, Latin name Russula emetica, which kind of gives emetica, you an idea of yeah. what it does. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, there's one called the shrimp Russula, which apparently grows around here, but I've never found one that huh. smells like shrimp when you break it or cut it. Oh, wow. Oh, let's check. No, I don't smell anything shrimpy on this one, which huh. is a good good edible. Uh, so this is one of the genus, the groups that you really kind of got to know your stuff before you start chowing down on. Yeah, we could easily look in the book because they're a pretty pretty unique color. This kind of pinkish pinkish color. Hygrophorus, I believe. And again, I'd have to look to see. I've never harvested them for being edible. I think they're one of those species that are sort of in between. They're not poisonous. They won't make you sick. Uh, but they just don't really have a whole lot of taste. So most people just leave them alone. I am not sure what these are. They'd be fairly simple to identify though based on the... They've got some scales on the stalk and a real distinct... I think I feel like I've looked these up before and have just forgotten. What, but yeah, if you started looking through the book and Looking at the pictures, there, there are you know, a few species I remember where you can see this really distinct white kind of ragged edge and hmm. that's how you would start to track it down. Oh, I see. Oh yeah. And then again by the color of the gills, white, um, and then possibly by doing the, the spore print. So a, a coral mushroom in the Romaria, Romaria, or Romaria genus. And there are several uh, species in this genus that are pretty common in wet years in the, this part of the Rockies. It stays moist, the clumps will grow. If it dries out, they'll shrivel away and uh, after three or four days of no rain, they'll be gone. Here we have a Hydnum imbricatum, commonly called hawk's wing for obvious reasons. Um, this is also a fairly common high country mushroom. And I haven't seen a whole lot of them this year, but I expect they will pop in the next few days. They are edible. No danger of poisoning with these and they're pretty unmistakable. Um, some people don't like them because they have really strong mushroom flavor. One of the strongest of all the wild mushrooms here. They are a favorite of Art Good Times, who's a well-known poet and county commissioner down in Telluride in San Juan County. He tells me he loves these more than anything else. I'll show you the under, underneath side of one of these. They also have sort of a more of a spongy texture underneath yeah. for the for the spores, spore tubes. If you cut them in half, you'd be able to kind of see that a little bit. I'll slice this one in half. This one's nice and young and tender. This one's going to be delicious on pizza tonight. 